All right, guys, we have a ton of stuff to cover when it comes to helmets. Yeah. Dustin, <laughs> just the conversation leading up to this video, I was like, wow, he knows a lot about helmets. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm just gonna start off by saying, you know, for me, I'm an F3 carbon guy, but after hearing all the spiel and the tech stuff yeah. of all, all the other stuff, I'm like, hmm, maybe I need to try some other things. And, and I, I will say the reason that I have fallen in love with the F3 Carbon is the weight and it literally feels like you're putting a pillow right, on. And, I, and, so, and so I love that. So Dustin, I'm going to kind of, I'm gonna give the stage to you and sure. I want you to talk about, you know, Climb is relatively new into the helmet market. Right. Um, and you guys have created some incredible pieces here. Um, and I think the reason why is because everyone at Climb is a rider. Right. And, yeah. and we, we see, we see that not only in the gear, but also in the helmets. Yeah. And I mean, we, this kind of applies for all of our gear, but every time we go riding, we're trying to figure out like, okay, well, what can we do better? How can this be more comfortable? Well, I wish I had this or whatever. Right. And that's kind of what drove us with the helmets. Um, and it's really taken off. So let's talk about what we have sitting yeah. here on the table. So we've got F3 carbon. I think we're on our third or fourth year of this shell. We've got the F3 carbon pro that's new for 22, 23, we'll talk about what separates these two helmets. We've got F5, which is a carbon as well. This was our kind of our first major entry mm -hmm. and is a pretty big staple helmet for us yep. as well. And then we have the F5 Colroid, which has a real cool safety story to it. So we'll talk about the, the performance features of each helmet. So the, the F3 carbon, your go-to helmet that you've had for, for a long time. Probably what sets this helmet apart is the shell size. It's about 12% smaller than most helmets on the market. On Which average, is what, right? like, it's literally what I felt. You know, when I put the helmet on, especially comparing it to an F5, I can, like, I like the size of the shell. Well, and, and if you think about it, so fatigue is a big deal. Yeah. You know, for a lot of us, we're packing around a backpack, you know, we've got pressure on our back or, you know, whatever situation we are positioning on the sled. And so after a while, you start to feel that fatigue. A lot of us do anyway. Big time. And so if you can reduce the size of the shell, so you don't have such a large object on your head and then the weight, that's going to go a long ways to reducing your fatigue at the end of the day. And we have people tell us all the time, I cannot believe the difference on my neck and headaches just from switching to a helmet like this, that's smaller and lighter, yeah. right? There's other things, there's ventilation. This helmet's ventilated fairly well compared to most helmets. For a snow helmet, some people don't want a ton of ventilation. So, that's me. So, yeah, and so it's got enough to kind of keep you cool when you need it to, but it's not so much that you're gonna freeze your ears off, you know, going down the trail if you have to. The F3 also has the feature, and I think that's what you're picking up yeah, there. Both the F3 and the F5 have this option. Yep. And, what, and what is this? And this is a windstopper liner that will snap up between the comfort liner and the shell of the helmet and yep. it blocks off the airflow from coming through the vents and it also is waterproof uh, so if you're in a rainy situation or a spring situation no that's not going to drop down and get onto your head so these are nice because you can just i mean you can literally have it in your pocket you can start from the truck with this in if it's super cold down the trail get up there warms up hurry up pop it out so it's a pretty versatile piece and we offer this for all of these helmets that you see here for me um, and I know you still have a couple of details to talk about, but for me, again, the, the F3, the features that really do it for me are the Fidlock. So basically yeah. the magnetic, uh, strap that attaches the helmet to your head. Uh, there's no more excuses of never buckling your helmet. Right. The Fidlock is, is awesome. Yeah. Um, also I like the ability to, so I have, and this is, this is one thing is I have a very unique sized head. Um, and so the ability to, um, I wear a, I wear a large, I'm say, no, sorry. I wear a medium, but then I wear large cheek pads um, to take up some of the room to be tighter on right. my cheek. And so I love the ability to really cater the fit of the helmet to, to my face and my head. And what you just touched on are a couple of features that go across the board of all these helmets. So we've got Fidlock on every one of these helmets. And once you use Fidlock, like the first couple of times you're like, where does it go? And then pretty soon it's just second nature and you're just, you're just flipping it over there every time yep. and you don't even think about it and you never have to use the gloves to figure out the D rings and all that. So yep. once you have Fidlock, you, you can't go back, right? But then you talked about the cheek pads and the comfort liner inside. You can custom fit 
you know, say you like a certain shell size, but you want to go to a thinner cheek pad or a thicker cheek pad, you've got the option to do that. We make different sizes yep. of cheek pads, again, for every one of these helmets on the table. Um, another thing that all of these helmets have in common is they're all a hand-laid carbon fiber shell. So without getting into a whole bunch of boring stuff, it's basically the most efficient carbon fiber process there is. There's not wasted glue. It's not heavy where it doesn't need to be or uneven. It's, it's a very high-end aerospace carbon fiber. Like what they, they make it like Apache blades out of this stuff. Like it's super right. high-end stuff, right? So these, all these helmets have that material. One thing you brought up uh, when we were talking prior to this video is one thing that's really important is the size of the eye port on these helmets to work in conjunction, not only with the goggles, but to give you that field of view, mm -hmm. um, that peripheral that we're all trying to achieve. You'll hear us refer to it as FOV, field of view, right? And so if, if you, a lot of helmets, if you put them on and you start looking around, it's kind of hard to tell what that field of view is. So you want to always try a helmet on and then try a goggle on with it. Mm -hmm. So you can see how that goggle is going to fit and fill in that helmet. So all of our goggles and helmets are designed to work together, yep. but they're designed to utilize a larger FOV area. This opening right here, we went as large as we possibly could so that we would have maximum options with goggles and FOV. Um, and so that is unique. And sometimes you have to put the helmet on, try it, then maybe go back to your old helmet and try Just it. And then all the of a sudden difference. you're like, oh yeah, now I can see, you know, the difference in my side, you know, port view or whatever, lower, upper. And so, yeah, that's a good point. So that covers the F3 Carbon. And now new to the lineup this year is the F3 Carbon Pro. Yeah, and it's the same shell, identical shell, um, same structure. But what we've done is you've got, see this green material here? Looks like a bunch of straws welded together. This is called Colroid and it vents really well, but it also adds uh, a safer structural integrity that absorbs uh, impact better than a styrofoam. So you've got EPS, styrofoam, you've got Colroid. Well, what we've done, we've taken the F3 carbon and we've added some of this material to the inside of it. And you can't really see it, but there's strips of that Colroid down the center. So it's gonna be a it's going to have a little bit better ventilation, a little bit better breathability, mm -hmm. but then it's also going to have a little bit higher safety aspect because of the impact resistance on this or absorption on this material. Man, I have a GoPro clip of uh, me getting whacked in the head, wishing I would have had had right. this. Um, well, uh, any other differences on the on the Pro? Yeah, so Looks one like we got a different we've got visor. a new visor yep. here, and you know this is really the result of a lot of feedback from consumers and, and people that have used our helmet. Um, we want to try to deliver what consumers want. And so we take that feedback and one of just a ton of feedback we got was they wanted a visor that was a little bit different, a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. So we took that and we've developed this new visor here that has a good pass through on the airflow. It's got a little bit better sun protection on the top and, and visibility through the visor, uh, but it's also stronger than, than the previous version. You'll see the F3 Carbon has the previous version. Yep. Um, I think eventually we'll update all of them to the new visor. Um, so that's a, a, a big difference. Cool. I think one note, um, and then we'll start moving on to the F5, but I, I thought one thing that was interesting is, you know, weight difference. Again, when we talk about a helmet on, especially for me, six days a week, a hundred days, you know, mm -hmm. that's a lot of, a lot of neck strain. Um, having the, the more protection, um, you weren't, you didn't have to sacrifice weight, weight on that. No, there's virtually no difference in weight between the two. I think if you put it on a gram scale, you'll get maybe 10 or 15 grams yep. difference, I think. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, this is already one of, if not the lightest uh, full, you know, helm, uh, chin full, what am I trying to say? Uh, uh, a full, it's not a full face, you know, but a full sure. protection helmet on the market. Yeah. A lot of companies, and this is where you gotta be a little bit careful because there's some kind of gimmicky claims out there. They'll claim it with like the really small helmet, the really small shell. We do all of ours with a large shell and we still, have one of the lightest weights, if not the lightest weight on the market. So they're extremely light. Like, like you pick it up and you're like, like exactly. is that a helmet? It's it, the first thing, anytime someone comes into the showroom and they go to try a helmet on, they're like, is this safe? I'm like, yes, I promise you it's, yeah. it's safe. And yeah. when you talk about safety, talk about um, there's different classifications um, on these helmets. Yeah, so there's From different safety, safety um, certifications out there. There's DOT, there's ECE, there's Snell. But what we've realized is from a power sports perspective, we're not racing stock cars. Yeah. So, you know, Snell's not really the thing that we need to use, right? Mm -hmm. These aren't on specifically on-road race helmets. So we're not as concerned with DOT, but ECE is kind of the premier power sports certification. So all of these are ECE approved. There's a couple different versions, 2205, 2206, but essentially what you need to know is they're as safe as we can yeah. basically get them. 
Um, so even though it might be surprisingly light, there's zero sacrifice on safety. It's still safer than a lot of the helmets out there. Perfect. All right, let's transition into the F5. And, you know, my question to you was, why would someone buy an F5 over an F3? Yeah, and we get that question all the time. It is, a, it is an excellent question because there's guys like me who run a little warmer in the head. Yeah. Um, and I want as much venting as I can possibly get. And although this shell might be slightly larger, you can, and we'll do some close-ups, you can see the ventilation here is, there's just a ton of ventilation. Everywhere you look, there's vents on this helmet. And so it's by far the most ventilated helmet on the market. And the other thing too is, there's a slight fit difference between mm -hmm. the F3 and the F5. And some people will prefer the F5 the fit, fit yep. over the F3. We want to give them options, right? Sure. And so you want to try them both on and really get an idea of what's going to work best for you. When I'm riding my dirt bike in the summer, it's an F5. Yeah. Like no question. Yeah. Because I'm I'm already warm, you know, and I'm and so the F5 just vents so much better than the And F3. again, still having the same features of the Gore wind stopper. Yeah. Um, so again, if you know, and that that's what's pretty nice to have this is, you know, you would need this or, or a balaclava to uh, go in on the trail. On the trail, right? Yeah. Yep, and then once you get there, you're, you're removing this. And the, in, what's even cooler too is sometimes you gotta think outside the box. I've had trail rides where I'm doing 200 miles in a day and it's 20 below zero. Well, you know, we'll take 10 minutes. We'll take the liner out. I'll throw duct tape over the vents. I'll vent up my, you know, mm -hmm. those vents. I can still use that same helmet. I just, you know, prepare it slightly differently. Then I go on my ride and if it warms up halfway through the day, okay, I'm gonna pull some duct tape off and open my vents back up. And so really versatile from that respect. Yeah. Okay, and so then we've got basically two, uh, the two versions we have here of the F5 um, from a safety standpoint, talk about this one. Yeah, so this, the, the story behind this is it's all about safety. Um, there's people out there who, they've had a couple of concussions and they're really, they need the maximum concussion protection they can get. Some snow cross guys I know, you know, whoever. So. When we designed this helmet, we took the shell of the F5, but then we incorporated a lot more of this colroid material. So the whole, the whole top section is like this colroid material, which has a safer impact protection than EPS or styrofoam. And then we've also incorporated a material called MIPS, a system called MIPS, which is a rotational slip plane that protects against angular impacts. Mm. So we've, we've thrown everything at this helmet we can possibly do to make as safe as helmet as technology is available for us right now. And it, it is one of, if not possibly the safest helmet on the market right now. And it's still carbon as well. It's still carbon. There's a little bit of tr uh, weight difference between the mm -hmm. F5 and the F5 Colroid because we've added that MIPS system in there. So there's a, you know, you can fill it if you pick them up, there's a little bit, but it's still, I mean, it's still lighter than a good portion of the helmets out there on the market right now. So it's still, relatively light yeah well guys that's a lot of information to digest on the helmet side of things i think mo most importantly you need to find the helmet that works best for you you know we can talk about all the details uh, and all the specs but in the end you need to try it on you need to try it on with the goggles that you are planning to wear um and again i think that's what's so nice about the line and how versatile it is is there's a you should never have to sacrifice comfort in your helmet. This is something that is on all day and uh, it, all the helmets in this lineup allows you to get the right fit and the right function uh, for your agenda.